So Adam, you and I recently had a little debate in uh, issue 240 of Game Informer, uh, talking about the pros and cons of playing a series in its entirety, chronologically. I debated for it, you were against it. Maybe I could give you like an example of something. Like, I always want to give you like some insight into the like neurosis that I have about it. <laughs> so I have never played like a Ninja Gaiden game like all the way through. I've always wanted to get into it, but I feel like I should beat Ninja Gaiden 1, 2, and 3 on the Nintendo Entertainment System before I dive into those games. I mean, if you want to play old games, like, play old games and that's great. Like, I play tons of old games, it's awesome. But to, to have this sort of compulsion to play through these older games that in so many cases are just punishing, especially in the case of some, something like a Ninja Gaiden, it's, it's just it's just getting punched in the face over and over and over again. Like, I weep for your time. Weep for me when I come in pissed off about Ninja Gaiden 3 and no one wants to hear about it because it'd be like walking into the office and having seen like Rush Hour for the first time and really <laughs> wanting to talk about that. You don't need to play through the original Prince of Persia on an Apple II. That's the reason I haven't played that series as well. Sands of Time, which is one of the best games of the PS2 generation. Mm -hmm. There's no... But Prince of Persia, that Apple II game, was incredibly important for like that kind of platforming game and like the sort of deliberate you know, calculated jumps and climbing and stuff like that. And if it's something that you are interested in gaming history or you just want to play this game that you heard about, absolutely, go play it. But not solely for the reason that you feel like you're not going to understand what Sands of Time is about or appreciate something like Sands of Time. You don't need to play Metroid to appreciate Metroid Prime. You can watch an episode of Arrested Development in Season 3 and not have seen any of the buildup for the fact that a character loses an appendage. But the fact that you've seen all of them makes that evolution that much more meaningful. And if you're going to spend the time to play a game, and play games in general, why not try to squeeze every, every ounce of appreciation and inside references that you can out of it, if it's all the same? Because that time that you're spending playing those old games, you could be playing more games! You could be playing awesome new games! And so, by limiting yourself and enforcing these compulsions, I guess, to, to dig through the, the history of every franchise, all you're doing is making it so you can't play more of the current awesome games. Like, is it better to play through NES Ninja Gaidens rather than play through, like, I don't know, something that I hate, but then play through, like, Metal Gear Solid? I see your point, because for me, like, I, I jumped onto Metal Gear Solid, which is a good example, on PlayStation 1. Just, what's Metal Gear Solid? I've never heard of this. And I didn't know that there was a Nintendo MSX series. And if I had known that, I never would have played Metal Gear Solid, you know? Right. And I would have missed out on something. So I'm right. I mean, I, I see where you're coming from, but in a perfect world, I would have played those previous Metal Gear Solid games before I jumped into the PS1 game. And then I would have known, hey, Metal Gear Solid is basically a remake of Metal Gear 2 on the MSX. And, and that's totally fair. It, it would be in a perfect world. You would, you would absolutely get more out of it. I totally agree but you're never gonna have that much time. We literally, it is our professional obligation to play video games. We play video games all the time. Right. We don't have enough time no. to play this stuff. We're gonna retire eventually, probably. We're gonna retire Maybe. eventually, and we're still not gonna have enough time no, you're right. to play everything. We're gonna die before all the games come out. My other point though, is that once you start getting into games that inspired other games, mm -hmm. you can start digging into sort of the PC history of like Western RPGs. You start talking about Ultima, Might and Magic, Wizardry, all those old games, Bard's Tale. You are never going to play through all those games. They give you a great foundation for understanding what Mass Effect is about and what's, well, Mass Effect is actually kind of more, I would say, Japanese at this point. But okay. it would give you a better idea of what things like Skyrim are about. For yeah. sure, and you would see much more of the sort of context of, of how those games and what those developers are thinking. But do you have 9,000 hours to play through all those games? Of course not. Well, I mean, it raises another question whether or not you'd rather be very knowledgeable about specific series or if you'd rather just have a breadth of all the good stuff. There's total validity to going back and, and, and checking out all those games so you do understand that Mass Effect is more Japanese driven than maybe Western RPGs. I think I think that there's value in that, but like Metal Gear Solid is probably a lot more relevant to Mass Effect than Wizardry is. Right. You would better spend your time playing more modern stuff, playing whatever catches your eye, than trying to go and completely, you know, excavate every single thing. I mean, you start getting into transmedia, 
right? Do you, start, do you need to read the Silent Hill comic books? Don't read the Silent Hill comic books. There's a guy that's reading like Dead Space novels right now. I don't know if you're Any talking to the right guy, but <laughs> they're not that bad. So bad. It was about the guy that started the Unitology thing. It's fun doing deep dives on that stuff, you know? Like if I hadn't played, um, if I hadn't gone on my way to play like every Castlevania game, even some of the crap ones, like I wouldn't appreciate how great Lords of Shadow was and how great it was for the series, you know? And I played some of those crap ones like Castlevania Legends on the original Game Boy, I played them for the sake of it. You know, I played Devil May Cry 2 for the sake of it. And I'm happy that I did, even if, you know, in the meantime I could have been playing Prince of Persia or something, and it's an objectively better game than Devil May Cry 2. But I know a lot more about Devil May Cry, and I, I value that depth of knowledge. I think I value that more than having missed one good game that most people have played. Do you need to play Mario Brothers? Super Mario Brothers to appreciate new Super Mario Brothers? See, I don't think you do. I think that you can get 99% of the value out of new Super Mario Brothers without ever having picked up an NES controller. And I think that 1% that you catch, that's a callback or a little reference or a song from an early Mario game that maybe you wouldn't recognize if you hadn't played it. Maybe it is 1% in the greater scheme of things, but I think as an overall appreciation for the brand or for that experience, like that little spark that you get for knowing that little thing, like you're playing Castlevania Lords of Shadow and you recognize I'm in a music box and make, doing some weird music box remix of Vampire Killer from the first Castlevania game. That callback, having played those old games as is, is poorly as some of them have aged, it just strengthened the enchantment of the entire experience for me. And I think that 1% is incredibly important for me. Reading Dead Space novels is too high a price for that 1%.